welcome back. So, finally, the long-awaited, the responses from Final Fantasy, the Eli Felist. Um, I think that's what he was. I don't think he, was, he subscribes himself as being an anti-natalist. Um, I think he says he's an Eli Felist. But he, um, I, I just want you to know, he thinks every argument I come up with or everything I say is just stupid. Um, so, since everything I say is stupid, instead of really counter-arguing it and just saying, oh, that's stupid, that's stupid, that's stupid, that's stupid, okay, fine, I'm stupid, I don't know what I'm talking about. You're 100% right. No questions asked. Um, how could we be so stupid as to question your philosophy? That, that, that's just not how philosophy works. We never, ever, ever question new philosophies that come out. That, that's... That that, that, that that just doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, Christianity and everything else that came before it, yeah, absolutely question it, but, you know, not, not this. This is perfect in all of its being. There's no way it could possibly have any, any kind of error in it. No, no subjectivity. It's, it's completely 100% pure objective reality. Even though you can still be completely have a complete logical argument and be wrong, or have a complete logical argument and still have another complete ar logical argument that is in stark contrast to another. So, forgive me for questioning. I'm just going to read, I don't know, I haven't really decided if I'm going to make responses yet or not. Like, I don't want to, but at the same time, it's really hard not to. I'm trying to get this, it, it's, it's a mess, deliberately, but... <laughs> I do like this lighting, though, because you can actually see the real color of my eyes and not brown there. Hazel. I quite like having hazel eyes, not brown. That's a natural color. So I like the lighting. The lighting before it didn't capture that, but I like the dark atmosphere. Anyway, so, um, he says this is his first response, uh, re-uploaded part one, and he had a lot more to these when it was originally posted, but he shortened them down to just the claim itself. He says, at 27 minutes and 27 seconds into this video, he says, you make the claim that humans have no, cognitive, no cognition or awareness. And I remember reading this the first time when it was in the email, and then I deleted it, went to the video, and it was gone. I, I, I actually looked at the timestamp. Where it would appear, if you look at that timestamp, that's what I'm saying, and it's taken out of context, I do believe. So let's go ahead and watch that timestamp. It doesn't, it doesn't have any co 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 cognizance, or cognizance or awareness to, to, make, to, judgments. to make judgments. Okay. And, um, and um, we had somebody we that, had somebody made, that some made some interesting. interesting. So we had these. So we had these. I'll read these. I'll to you read these he, to you because he. Um, um, Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. You made some you really made good, some really good arguments. arguments. And I think. And I think he said that one of the arguments I made was vague, vague or that you or that you couldn't you understand, couldn't understand it. It was in this one. He said. He the said position the position number four. Number four he, said, he said. No, no, no. No, no, no. It was not this one. It was position number three. Now this position. Now this position. He, he's, 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 every every position, every, every position I have, of course, is dumb. Dumb. It's actually it's so actually convoluted so convoluted that I'm not that entirely, I'm not entirely sure, what sure what you're trying to imply. To imply. I, think I think you're saying that since, that humans, since humans are just chaotic, are just chaotic crap, crap like, the universe, like the universe, that is exactly, that what, is I'm exactly what I'm saying. It has no, it has right, to no right to judge anything or make any conclusions, conclusions about anything. 
But it but doesn't. It, it doesn't, doesn't have any, it doesn't co have any co co cognizance. Co cognizance or okay, so as you can see there, I'm not saying that humans have no cognition or awareness. I'm saying the universe doesn't. And what I am saying is that human, human beings, life is a causality due to random events. That's what I was saying in there. But just because we have cogni cognizance, cognition, awareness, self-awareness, the most important part of being human is that we are self-aware. Very few animals in the animal kingdom are self-aware. Um, what I'm saying in there is that we, we tantamount to being biological growths. I'm not saying we don't have cognition or awareness. We certainly do. That's done by process of our brain. Our brains interpret the world around us via our sensory organs, and I'm pretty sure I've gone over this before. I'm not saying we that we don't have cognition. I said in the video, the universe does not have cognition or awareness. So I, I don't know why you're thinking that I'm claiming that humans have no cognition or awareness. I just played the clip for you. I specifically said the universe does not have cognition or awareness. It's not a plan. <laughs> the things that occur in the universe are not, they, they don't happen deliberately. There's not somebody out there or any kind of mysterious force or anything, no, no magical presence, pushing hydrogen and helium atoms and atoms together to create a sun. They happen, they, they exist, they happen to hit each other and create a sun. It is circumstantial. It is it is accidental, or it's it's just a random event that produces a cause and effect relationship that affects and impacts our reality, and we can observe it. So that's not saying we humans have no cognition or awareness. We do. We're still just nothing more than biological growths. They're the same as fungus, trees, plants, other animals, um, I, I mean, I mean, I, I, I am trying to lower the bar on human existence as saying we are not special. As far as, like, if you look at what's going out in the cosmos or the rest of the universe, um, life is rare. It, we, we definitely have evidence to show that the universe is not indicative of producing life. It's actually antithetical to producing life. It's hard to produce life. Extremely difficult. And it's, it's a... It's hard. It's a hard chance. It, it's it's like a you know it's not a one in ten it's much rarer than that but that doesn't mean that it's a not a <clears throat> causality of a random event I mean my parents had sex that was a random event and it created me it's something we don't really have control over so Okay, his response, <clears throat> uh, okay, let, let, let's just say he's right, okay? See, this is why people like me in, in Mindham insult people like you that have such messed up thinking. It's just too ridiculous. If humans have no cognition or awareness, then how the fuck are we communicating right now? Well, I never said that we didn't have cognition or awareness. I said the universe didn't. Um, maybe you misunderstood. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt because I'm not going to be mean. How the fuck does something that isn't 
aware or cognitive communicate basic and abstract concepts to e with each other, then well, you can't. You need to have cognition and awareness to do that. You need to have higher functioning brain mechanisms to create communication on a very complicated level such as we have. Animals have actu actually have ways of communicating, but it's far more primitive and simplistic. When my cat stands at my food at her, her at her food dish and meows at me, you can see cats don't meow in the wild. It's a weird phenomenon that domesticated cats meow. She's basically telling me she wants food. Um, I think that's more instinctual, though, and there's not like necessarily a deep thought process, but a thought process nonetheless. Your claim is wrong on its face. Get that incorrect false idea out of your head. Okay, I don't think I ever had that idea. But, you know, you're right. You're right. You're not wrong. Um, I'm clearly in the wrong, because I guess you cannot be wrong. I don't know. 28 minutes, 28 seconds. You claim deterministic universe implies a cognitive universe. Your response. It does not. Determinism is from cause to effect. That's what the universe is. It's deterministic. There's determined causes that lead to absolute effects. And you talk about the hydrogen atom will never randomly change into a gold atom. You're absolutely right. That's true. I agree. I'm not talking... When I, when I talk about that, I'm not talking about hydrogen atom, atom randomly turning into gold. I'm talking about hydrogen and helium colliding into each other is a random act. It's not deliberate. Um, a hydrogen atom needs to somehow acquire the... Pro yeah, we, we know that. Uh... Cognition and intel intelligence aren't necessary for deterministic function. Well, in your example, that would be true. But still a cause and effect relationship. The universe can be deterministic and have no mind, cognition, brain, intelligence, etc. The universe is likened to a small puzzle piece widely floating about. And some of them pile together because they mechanically can into a larger, more complex puzzle piece that reacts in its own way with various other types of larger pieces. Well, that, that, you know, that's just part of science, isn't it? Being able to observe, measure, control, predict, and replicate. I mean, we, we know how a sun works because we, we know the nature of the atoms involved. And I would agree with this statement. I mean, I don't know if I'm arguing that it's deterministic or not. I'm just saying that there's there's no plan involved in it. It just it it is a random mess. But yes, certain things like ugh, certain things do have absolution in their cause and effect. Absolutely, you're not going to get a hydrogen atom that turns into gold. Absolutely. That's not, that's not a thing. But I'm not going to sit there and say that hydrogen and helium colliding in with each other is deliberate either. It's accidental. It just happens. There doesn't have to be a full-fledged reason why. They're not just two puzzle pieces that happen to fit together. They're just two atoms that happen to collide together. And that's the outcome they have when they do. They create a sun. They create... I forget, is it fusion or fission? Nuclear fusion? Yeah, I had no idea what qual is. Basically, he says, his response on however you pronounce this too, uh, my response to quala is essence or energy and that sounds like 
spirituality to me off the get-go. I'm not saying that's what you're saying, but that's what it sounds like. And I, I don't believe that people... Ha I mean, we, we're ran by energy. We consume biomatter and biomass for energy. We, we do that. But I, I, I don't know that, you know, we have like an internal essence of energy. It's as simple as that. In the context where I used it, I was saying that pain, suffering, torture, anguish, agony, horrific emotion, etc. have an intrinsic koala, or essence or energy, of negatively or badness. Meaning, if I had an empty jar and used a machine which manifested a specific atomic pattern within it, where neur uh, neurons were arising and acting in a specific way which made consciousness and that same consciousness was in a state of feeling painfully burned alive the atomic pattern of koala or essence or energy in that jar would be bad okay it would not be neutral or good or up to any Tom, Dick, and Harry to impose what they think the energy in the jar is. Absolutely. I, I think you don't realize how much you are preaching to the choir on this. Like, I will admit to you, the world is cold and dark and cruel and life is complicated. It's hard and it's one thing I can guarantee, like a quote from Nick Cave, is the one thing that can be guaranteed of life is an abundant amount of pain. And a quote from Brotherhood of Pagans is, no life is possible without tears. I agree with these statements. I am pessimistic. I do look at the darker side of life, and I dwell in it almost deliberately, and seek joy in it. I seek joy out of melancholia. I don't know why. Melancholy seems fascinating to me. It's, it's just the state of mind that I exist in is melancholy. And honestly, I don't want to be like the happy little bubbly people out there that are so blissfully unaware ignorance and bliss and all that. I don't want to be like them. Because there's so much that they're unaware of, it's boring. I, I don't know how to put it. As, as, as painful as it is, I enjoy melancholia. So I don't know how you would classify that. But yeah, I agree. The world has a lot of agony and horrific emotion and suffering and torture and pain. And even I think Friedrich Nietzsche would agree with you on that. Um, the problem I have when you... And I, I, I'm sorry to take it away from the, the qual of the essence or energy. The problem I have is that you don't apply that same logic to things that feel good. Things that feel good are always tantamount to, well, that's addiction. And I think, well, so what if it's addiction or some kind of drug or some kind of, you know, dopamine, endorphin, serotonin reaction in your brain? That seems to be irrelevant to me. The point is, is that there is pleasure to be had in life, which is something that you say, no, it's, it's rejectable. And, and I, I think that that's very subjective. And I find it strange that you're unwilling to say that, that that's your subjective stand to say that there is no measurable 
Um, well, maybe, maybe you don't, but to say that there is no measurable pleasure and that any measurable pleasure that we have is either addiction or does not compare to the amount of pain is subjective. I think that's your perception, that that's your opinion. Now, I think, you, you know, you should take more, like, well, I mean, I can't tell you what to do. I can't tell you what to do. I would argue taking the approach of saying my opinion is that because there is an abundant amount of pain in the world, life is not worth living it's no there's no reason to even create it because you you are just inviting some uh, a living entity into nothing but a plethora of pain and the payoff in the end is nothing more than death And, I, I mean, you, you can absolutely say that, you know, that's your opinion. Not everyone feels that way, you understand. Not everyone does. Some people think life is amazing. So, I, I don't know about energies and, and stuff like that. So, I, I mean, you, you say that there's a metric of which we can use to measure pain and a metric of which we can use to measure pleasure and compare and contrast. But I think the feelings of pain and pleasure are so different, and depending on the situation that you're talking about, they are extraordinarily different. It's really hard to compare pain and pleasure. You, you can almost feel pain and pleasure at the same time because they're so, in contrast, different. Sorry to take it away from Koala, but thank you for explaining what Koala is to me. Okay, so, um, he just put a timestamp and said, My response, I left out positives because real positives don't exist. Here we go. There's just less bad and neutrals. Every so-called positive is derived from either, um relieving a negative or is an addiction to something intrinsically neutral a real positive in its nature would be something that's objecti objectively constructive to some sort of objective ought such a thing doesn't exist there is no koala in the universe that is positive the fact that death death erases memory of anything that could be called a so-called positive makes life objectively unconstructive. But couldn't you say the same thing about negative? You have no real memories of the negatives and the neutrals. So what difference does it make if the experiences are negative, positives, and neutrals, if all of it is in the end, unrememberable because you die. You can't just enjoy the ride. I think I said that before. I'm sorry, though. You you must be right. You must absolutely be right. Um, you, you know, it's like I said, my opinion, melancholia is interesting. And I enjoy it. And I enjoy existing in it. And yeah, I'm going to die and I'm not going to remember any of this. I still get joy out of doing it. I don't know what to tell you. I have a story to tell you, actually. Something interesting. Uh, which is a bad thing, okay. There is nothing to build in life that will last. And that's true. And there's nothing that the universe, or a god, or a whatever, needs from anything that can be built. And it's irrational to live life, to live a life one is only going to forget about. 
It may be irrational, but that's what life is. This is a huge problem that the atheist community needs to talk about more and recognize more. You know, if I argued this stuff from a moralist, nihilist perspective, where there is no morality, I'd say, well, there is no morality. There is no need to justify. So if you think that people should not reproduce, life should not reproduce, life should not exist, fine. But on the same token, from a moralist nihilist standpoint, being that there is no morals, there is no God, no morals exist, the opposite is also acceptable because there's no morals. It is not immoral to cause pain. It is not immoral to cause pleasure. It is not moral to cause pain. It is not moral to cause pleasure. That's a moral, moralist, nihilist standpoint. There is no moral. There is no ethical or unethical. There only is what there is. That's it. So, yeah, I mean, okay, you live life, you die, you remember nothing. Okay. And another timestamp. You ask a stupid question about complacency. My response. Well, of course complacency would be neutral. So you agree. There is a neutral you couldn't figure that out? Well, I mentioned it. If I was God and created a complacent sentience in a vacuum of nothing, I didn't do anything good or bad, positive or negative, I would have basically made a plant with a brain that had cognitive function but no feeling neurons. I don't think neurons feel. I don't think neurons, protons, and you, well, you're talking about electrons. Electrons, neutrons, and protons, they don't have feelings. Um, these swiveling things that comprise matter, they're, they're, they don't have feelings. They're not living organisms. I have to stop the video for a second because I'm being told the file is too big. All right. So I'm going to respond to these in order. So this is the first one. Uh, okay, so... I'm just going to say that you're right because the way that you argue, you don't really take the arguments that I make into account the way that I do for you. I can at least agree with you on a lot of things that you put in here. Like, yes, of course, we live through life, we die, we don't remember any of this. One day nothing will exist. And everything humanity has done will not be observed. It will perish into nothing. And so you ask the question, what's the point? Because it just goes to waste. Yeah, it does. But you're here. And while you're here, you might as well take advantage of the ability to be 
cognitively aware of your own existence because it's there's actually a calcul calculatable measurement that people have done crazy amounts of fucking math mathematician stuff that I didn't, wouldn't get into I'm not really a big fan of it but there's a lot more people that are not born than are. That's a true fact. The potential birth rate for life falls very short of what we're actually capable of. It's true. So, out of all the sperm cells and all the egg cells that could have come together, yours did. And you get to exist. Whether you perceive that existence as pain, such as I, but I am comfortable with it. I revel in my madness. I, I accept the mental pain. And don't necessarily get joy out of it, but I don't know. I find it fascinating. I don't know how to explain it. But sometimes it's, it's pain that sort of makes you remember that you're alive. And I think we often forget the thing, I mean, here, I, I, I was going to tell you the story, all right? This is not an argument. This is not a philosophical argument of any kind. It's just a story of my own personal experience. So, it's just a story. So, there's... Wolfsbane, these, this thing, these hallucinogens, a class of hallucinogen out there called Wolfsbane alkaloids. And they are disassociative hallucinogens. They're not associative hallucinogens like LSD and mushrooms. They're disassociative. So they're very, very unpleasant. They're, they're, they're not a pleasant trip like LSD and mushrooms are. You can be very pleasant on LSD and mushrooms. Peyote. This is disassociative, okay? Um, so, I took a bunch of this and went through the very unpleasant experience of a disassociative trip. Um, everything just felt so fucking surrealistic. It was crazy. It's very uncomfortable. I could feel the muscles in my neck stiffening. And I could feel like every beat of my heart. It was so bizarre. Like I'd never felt my heart like that before. It's like every pump it made. It's like I could just feel it. Like it was an appendage like an arm or a finger or a toe or something it's like I, I could feel that and then this sort of instinct this voice in the back of my head kicked in and said don't fucking fall asleep keep moving so I did I was sitting down I got up and I started pacing back and forth back and forth because I just had that voice, that, that instinct, don't fall asleep. Whatever you do, don't fucking fall asleep. Keep moving. Don't fall asleep. So I did that. <clears throat> a couple of friends of mine wanted me to get in a car with them. And I said no. And they said, why not? And I said, I'm afraid I'm going to get out while it's moving. And they thought it was funny. What they didn't understand is that that urge to keep moving was very real. And I don't think I could have sat 
in that car is that fear of going to sleep, I would have opened that door and tried to walk to stay awake. So I, I said, no, I can't get in the car. They didn't understand. I understood they did not understand my state of mind at the time. I was on a disassociative hallucinogen. So it lasted, you know, I think eight, nine hours. And as it started to wear off, I, I went to the, com the computer and I started looking up the specific type of wolfsbane alkaloid that I had taken. And I looked at the dosage recommendations and everything like that from medical perspectives, not, not weird, you know, blogs from drug addicts on the internet. I'm doing real fucking research. I, um, found out what that instinct was telling me to keep moving and stay awake was my body fighting going into a coma. And, it, you know, my body basically felt like, you know, my mind, my, the primitive mind, the subconscious mind equates that with death. And it felt like I was going to die. And I found out that if I had just taken 10 more milligrams of this shit, I would have been in a coma and I would have been in the hospital. But still, you know, that very real feeling of, like, I could have died. So, I walked outside and morning was coming. And I saw the sun come up on the horizon. I looked at the sky, I watched it, you know, peeking up over, you know, where the, the sun or the, the earth curves over and it's, it's slowly coming up on my end. And I hear the birds chirping, their little mating songs that they have, and I watched the flowers begin to bloom as they opened up to receive the sunlight. And I looked at the flowers and I saw these little bees flying around all the flowers, collecting pollen. And in that moment, I realized I was 10 milligrams away from never seeing this again. I get to exist another day. To, to, I thought I'd never be so amazed to see a sunrise. I was amazed and taken back in awe by it. I was like, I, I can see the sunrise another day. I can see these flowers bloom to absorb its, its sunlight and, and see the bees doing what they do and be able to hear the birds chirp and smell the air and feel the wind. And it didn't feel like a condemnation. It felt like a privilege, like lucky, like seriously. I was 10 milligrams away from never seeing this again and going into utter darkness. Yet here I am, and I get to see it again. So I guess you could say I'm not in a rush to never see those things again. I'm not in a rush to never experience sex again. I'm not in a rush to never experience the warm embrace of love and affection. I'm not in a race or a rush to not be able to experience the ability to be cognitively aware of my own existence and have self-awareness. I'm not in a rush for that. But... I know it's going to happen, but every day I wake up, I don't feel that way that I did that day, <clears throat> because you forget. 
it's not real enough. And ironically, this is something that pagan tribes used to do, and Native American tribes used to do. Uh, some tribes would call it dancing with death. I think it was the Europeans that did that. They called it dancing with death. And the whole idea, they called it a spiritual awakening. And I could see where spiritual people would perceive this as something spiritual. It wasn't spiritual. What it was is that when you come that close to death, and you feel your life slipping away from you, but you don't die, it tends to get you to look at the world in a different perspective. Of like, there's a lot that we take for granted. And I think a lot of the times when we're alive, we take for granted the fact that we are indeed alive. And I mean, you know, you don't have to wake up and see tomorrow. You could end it right now. I'm not in a rush to do that. I know that there's a lot of pain that awaits me. But because of that experience, it taught me there's a lot that I take for granted. And it took coming really close, 10 milligrams away from death, to realize that. But that's the one thing I haven't forgot. Is that I know I take things for granted. I don't know what those things are anymore, but I know I take them for granted. I got to be alive another day to see the world. And yes, that comes with the price of pain. And yeah, one day I'm going to die, but I'm in no rush. Are you in a rush to die? Do you want to not experience these things? Because there's a lot of experiences to be had. Have you ever had a serendipitous moment? That's an experience. Have you ever done LSD or mushrooms? That's an experience. Have you ever been in love? That's an experience. Melancholy itself is an experience. And it can be beautiful. Contemplating death until it scares you can be beautiful, at least from my perspective. So I don't know what you would call that. Maybe you'll just say, you're a fucked up individual. And I might agree with you. <laughs> but I just, I wanted to share that story with you because I don't know, you might want to I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you're with somebody who knows what they're doing because you don't want to overdose because you won't have that experience of seeing another day and realizing you were 10 milligrams away from never seeing the world again. The choice is yours. It's up to you. I'm in no rush to die. And I'm not afraid to say I'm afraid of it. Because it does mean the end of all this. Including the pain. And that's what I say. That the pain is worth the price of admission. I like being cognitively aware. Even with the pain. Even though the pain is more in abundance the pleasure many of the experiences are neutral but they're worth it to me so I don't know what you call that and that's what I say you interject a level of subjectivity in this and you will not admit it because you think that your philosophy is so sound that it cannot be held to scrutiny.
I'm willing to accept the premise of Elifalism as well as the antinatalist argument, but I think the Elifalists and the antinatalists need to realize not everyone feels the same way you do, and feeling is subjective. So, this is the first part. Let me leave your lovely little hate comments in the comment section below. I am not for censorship. As far as I'm concerned, you can leave these comments. It's fine with me. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell button on any channel you're subscribed to. Support independent content creators like this. I mean, as we all can agree, it's hard enough out there. This is a outlet for me, and I enjoy it, even with your negative comments. I'm going to heart your comment with me. I'm out.